All right, had this Bass Tracker 195 for three years. What do I think about it? Stay tuned. Let him fight, let him fight. Hey guys, Carl Beagle here, Beagler Outdoors. So for those of you who've been watching my videos, know that I've had this Bass Tracker behind me 195 for three years. Got in 2018, now it's 21. <clears throat> I'm gonna go over what I think about it. Would I buy it again? Would I recommend it? And what I went through. Okay, so for those of you who haven't watched my videos on the Bass Tracker, uh, there'll be a link in the description to the Bass Tracker warranty I had to be able to get the boat my rooster don't mind them to be able to get my boat in a way where I could actually use it for what I paid for so look in the description you'll see the warranty process I went through to get the boat looking like this okay so those things are in the description also every item you see in here that I point to there will be videos in the description and there'll be links to all the products I have on the boat so everything we're going over here with actual videos of what I went through with this boat will all be in the links in the description if it's your first time here please like and subscribe hit that subscribe button Greatly appreciated and follow us when we're doing videos. So we'll get a start. We'll start here on the bow of the boat, all right? What we did here is we put on the Minkota Ultrex, okay? Now this Minkota Ultrex, there is a video link in the description and I'll also put a pop-up to the video, uh, which would be somewhere over here, uh, right side, I guess. This Minkota Ultrex is the best investment you can buy. It's the best investment you can buy for a bass tracker, okay? The thing about it is, I have a power pole. You know, everybody wants the fancy power poles, power poles, power poles. Cool. They're good for bed fishing. But since I've gotten this bad boy right here, I've never, ever had to use my power pole. I deploy this, I hit the lock on button, and the boat stays where it's at. So, that's a really good buy. You, it's a must have. Now, think about the installation. There is an installation video, which will be in the bottom. Uh, I'll put a pop up to it up here of the video telling you kind of how to install it. The problem you have is the plate in the front is very hard to stick your hand into. There's really no room, so it's really hard to get the bolts in, but <clears throat> this is a good investment, okay? Now, one of the first problems I have with this boat, right down here on the tongue, it had a lot of rusting, okay? And as you can see right now, um, it's peeling. I'll get a zoom into that, but the paint's peeling, okay? And I went to Bass Tracker and I said, hey, What's going on? This is part of my warranty. They supposedly sanded it down and painted it. Well, it's rusting again. The trailer on this boat has a good powder coat on it. It is a steel, which doesn't do too good in water, but you can go figure. Um, the trailer held up pretty well. I'm not happy with the rusting here. It, it rusted, they painted it, it keeps rusting. So the front of my trailer is rusting, the powder coat peeled off, okay? Um, as for the paint on the boat, it holds up really well. It uh, holds up to dings and stuff like that, so I got no complaint about the paint, all right? So, now that we've gotten to the front of the boat, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go inside the boat and go over some things inside the boat. All right, so we're taking a seat here in the boat right now, and here's a couple of things that I don't like. Number one, as you know, I had to get all the vinyl removed through warranty. That's a long process. Um, the doors on these boats are not the strongest, all right? Like this door right here, if you open it up, all right, it's just flimsy, they're loose. They slam down. There's a problem with the drain on the edges. So you get water inside here a lot. I'm not really too happy with all the water that's getting inside of this. Uh, I have storage set up. Basically, I have two crates. Uh, I'll zoom in on that. Now uh, we have two crates here, and you can slide them back and forth with all this stuff. But the storage it comes with is horrible. It's just they're on an angle. It's not the best. The locks are always coming loose. So 
and I'm looking for these big spider. So that's for the doors. Now this center door I'm sitting on is horrible. I I'm not happy with it at all, okay? This center door right here is where the rod storage is at. First of all, see how it's crooked and this doesn't, it's just, it's just garbage. It's just, it's just real, it's just real flimsy. It's real flimsy and it's, it's just garbage. It shuts like crap. I I'm not happy with it. Um, but if, if you're just looking for a boat and you don't care about spending a tiny bit of money and not really caring about the quality, um, I don't know. But the rod storage is horrible. The way they have it in here, you're gonna bend, you're gonna bend all of your guides sliding them in here. The holes are too small. Um, getting them out is a pain in the butt because this is your only rod storage, and it, it's really small. All right, and also. You know, we have this power pole bracket going on in the power pole wires going on through here, which was another video that I'll get to when I get to the back of this boat. But um, I don't like the doors at all. They're real flimsy and cheap, and it's just, I don't know. I mean, it's a nice boat for the price, but we'll get into that in the end, okay? The seats, I had the post replaced because the old seat situation was basically, you know, what's the standard boats have? It's the hole and the pole goes down. Under warranty again, I had to replace with the new set because I could not get the poles to unscrew. Stuck. I needed a wrench. So I upgraded to that system. That was part of my warranty claim too. So they did change that and they changed the seat mounting, okay? And took the vinyl out and put all carpet in here. Now, the seats themselves seem to be holding up. The, the vinyl they use on the seats seem to be holding up. I did have a ripped seat that I also replaced through warranty because it came like that from the factory. So they gave me a new seat. That was not a problem at all. But for the front of the boat, problem I have with the front of this boat, when you're on the front of this boat, and I'm kind of ducking down to get the camera view, you don't have a lot of room up here. So, when you're on the very tip of the boat, like when you're up here, there's not a lot of room, okay? If you want to fish on the bow of the boat, I'm not lying, you really, really have to take the seat out. Because if you have the seat in and you have your poles in, you're stuck sitting down. That's it, you're going to be fishing sitting down. There's not a lot of room up here. And if you have a buddy fishing with you, okay, you guys are not going to both be able to fish on the bow of the boat. That's just the bottom line, okay? It's good for one person, but when you have your poles all spread out here, you really don't have room in the front. You only have a small area right here, and I've broken a ton of poles stepping on them. The beam in the front is not wide. It's, it's very small. So that's something I don't like about the boat. I've broken three fishing poles, having them mounted here, trying to walk around. I just broke them. So for the bow of the boat, I mean, you got some room, if you're really, really young and you want to stand all day, take out the front seat and you should be fine. But if you want to keep the front seat, it's kind of hard to fish with the front seat. Even with the front seat out, it's kind of hard, okay? So now, we'll get down here to the helm of the boat, okay? Now we're at the helm of the boat. Um, I'll tell you right off the bat, um, I had the battery gauge replaced on warranty because it stopped working. Um, otherwise, everything holds up good. The little thing that holds the cell phone here is worth the crap. It already stretched out and the sun beat it. So I still keep my cell phone there, but it doesn't really hold it down too tight. Everything else works fine. Everything works really well. Um, we do still have the, the Lorentz right here, which there'll be a link to the newer version. It, it works fine because what they give you in the front is a cheap which I have in the front now. I will show a video of that. It's just a cheap, generic hook one. It's real cheap. So I swapped it out with that one. That has the down scanning and stuff. So that's a pretty good GPS to use for down scanning and side scanning. Um, the seats up here are pretty fine. The drain is down here on the floor. The only drain you really have are the two cup holders, okay? And it's not good because when the water gets in the corners, each corner, your water sits there. So that's not good for the drainage. 
I don't care for that when it comes to drainage. You have to, when you wash your boat, you're gonna have to get something that's push all the water down to these drain holes. And I actually drilled holes in the cup holders because they didn't have holes to get water to drain down faster. So that's something I did. Um, I mounted this right here, holds all my stuff. You got your little light. So it's, it's not a bad boat. Um, I don't know. I'm giving an honest review after three years, so I'm just gonna leave it at that. Another thing I want to get to here is this seat. All right, you know it folds up. Has some storage area in here, and also in there we have our four bank Minn Kota charger, which will be in one of the videos I have. But um, it's a nice charger. It charges uh, four batteries. We only have three on this boat. We have two. For the 24 volt Minn Kota Ultrax and one for the cranking motor. This right here, your seat that folds up, don't. It's meant for people to stand on to jump over. Don't, because these bolts are going to loosen on you. I tighten these bolts all the time. I mean, yeah, you can put Loctite on them, but it gets really loose. So that I'm not happy with. I'm not happy with this. I just tell people to jump over. Don't slip on the seat. Don't jump on this. Okay. So uh, you know we do have our storage here. We do have another area behind this seat, which has storage. Um, I do like that. It's not the biggest storage area, but it's not the biggest storage area, but it does the job. Uh, it's storage is the problem on this boat. So whenever you can get storage, use it hundred percent. Now the back of the boat, um, it's not bad. My wife fishes on the back of the boat. You have your live well, which is in the center, and you got two little coolers, okay? But there's really no storage for nothing back here. Your only storage is the one in the front for your, you know, your 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 terminal tackle and all your stuff like that. And you have the right side for, you have to store your power pump in that right side. So you don't got that much storage, honestly. All right, my wife fishes back here. There's no room storage. There, there's no room storage at all. All right, there's no storage at all for anyone that's in the back doing anything. So she would store her two poles on the side here and it's just, they're in the way. So she really has no storage. There are other options for storage, but there's really no storage in the back. Um, like I said, you have your two coolers, which are cool. That's one good thing, it has two coolers. Uh, the live well is, it's a nice size live well. So they did okay on the live well. It did okay on the coolers. The area back here to fish though, my wife likes it. Obviously, you know, you gotta watch out for the power pole, and you gotta watch out for hitting the motor and stuff like that. But um, this is my wife's area. She fishes back here. I don't even touch this area back here. She's got a lot of room. It's nice. I think there's actually more room fishing the back here and on the bow. Yes, there is room on the other side of the seat, but I don't really fish there because the doors themselves are aluminum and they're not the strongest. Yeah, I'm a little thinner now. When I did the other video, I think I was about 380 pounds. And uh, yeah, those doors were screwing every time I stepped on them. All right, now we're on the back side of the boat. Uh, the, the six foot power pole does fine, it works. Uh, you have to put the brackets on, which there'll be a link in the description how to do that for your warranty. To so we got the Mercury. The, the motor has been good to me. It works fine, cranks up every time. Cleans up good, got a bath pro cover for it. Uh, I have no problem with the motor. Oil change, flushing, it's really easy. Really, you want more power. A 115, the max I'm getting on this for a 115, with an empty tank of fuel, I'm probably getting 45 miles an hour. So the problem is when you're in a tournament, and say you pick number one and you get sent out first, it's awesome. But the problem is you're going to your spot and the guy with a friggin' 150 or a 200 or even a 250 flies past you who is called 10 spots behind you. That's the time when you need a bigger motor. So if you're fishing tournaments, you gotta get a bigger motor. But if you're just looking to fish in general, the 115 will do fine in lakes and stuff like that. If you're fishing like Lake Okeechobee or something and you wanna get far fast, this is not gonna do it, okay? Another thing about moving with this boat, when you fill up the gas tank, you're going to lose 10 to 15 miles an hour because of the weight on your speed. 
and also the boat is going to lean like this if you're by yourself or with somebody because the way the gas tank is positioned so be prepared for that that's just something to keep in mind okay um, I got a second power pole bracket on here but I haven't really put a power pole on it because I'm not sure if I really care for the power poles because ever since I got the Minn Kota Ultra X I mean the power pole I mean the power pole I don't really use I mean maybe if I wanted to dock the boat somewhere off an island or you know maybe if I'm really really focusing on bed fishing so I don't really use the power pole I mean it's there and like I said I don't really use it that much but everything else on the back of the boat is fine I have no complaints on the back of the boat um, that's pretty much all good all right guys one of the things that really 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 I don't like about this boat is to put three batteries in it's a pain in the butt man it is a real pain in the ass to put three batteries in there there's no room it's really tight but you need three batteries because you need a 24 volt trolling motor a 12 volt trolling motor ain't gonna do nothing to you in the wind so to put that 24 volt trolling motor the Makoto Ultra X had to put a third battery in there is no room to slide it in and you have like that much room from your aluminum deck to the post which I'm not too liking about so you have to strap them down but it's a very tight fit back there if you have a battery in the back go out man you have to literally take out the first two batteries to get the third battery very very tight area back in there there is no room for nothing you can't even put your power pole pumps in there power pole pumps have to get routed to the front of the boat another pain in the butt but just letting you know what you guys are headed for so that is what I'm gonna let you know about the battery storage on this boat all right guys so my honest opinion on this boat when it comes down to it if you're on a budget and you're not fishing tournaments I'd get a really good John boat because the John boat I've had one I had a 10 foot or 12 foot in the bass tracker but if you just want to get out and fish I get a really good custom John boat okay now if you're gonna fish tournaments and you're on a budget and you really can't afford nothing and you want something that's gonna you know, work as a bass boat a good first bass boat yeah I'd recommend the bass tracker if you have a little bit of money to spend I would honestly go with a nitro now nitro is made by tracker marine which makes bass tracker okay comparison you have toyota and lexus you see a toyota's on the road see the fancy lexus they buy the same company bass tracker nitro same thing one's toyota one's a lexus nitros run anywhere from 40,000 to 80. now if you want a really really good boat and you want to spend the money you'd go with a phoenix or a skeeter or a ranger but if you're looking for a boat, you're on a budget, you want to fish tournaments, this would be the boat for you, okay? If you're looking to have something that's going to last you a long time, that you're going to have for a long time, that's going to have a lot more room, you want to go with probably like a Nitro or something upper than that. Would I have bought this boat again? No. I would have 100% went for a Nitro, I'm not going to lie. Something that has a little more to it, uh, a little more just attention taken to detail uh my boat i would love i'd love a ranger or a phoenix that's what i really love but i mean it's giving you an honest opinion on these and the thing about my channel is i give honest opinions i don't get paid to do opinions even if they paid me and gave me a free boat i would tell you guys the truth man because that's what i'm here for that's what youtube is for to tell you guys the truth not to have somebody pay you to tell you a lie but with that said i do like the boat it works it does what i have to do it's good for light tournament fishing. You gotta do a lot of upgrades on it, like you have to upgrade the battery, the trolling motor, the GPS, and your charger. All stuff gotta be upgraded. But it's the boat I have. I'm learning to live with it. Me and wife still gotta pay it off, so that's pretty much it. I hope that this review helped you guys out for the three year catching up on the bass boat. Once again, if it's the first time here, like and subscribe. I'd really appreciate that. And stay tuned for more of our videos. Hit that notification bell on the bottom that will tell you we're putting out new videos. Try to put up a new video every single Monday at 5 o'clock. It'll be a new upload. Also, we have our merch store, which is down below. If you want to buy some Beagle Outdoors uh, merchandise, it's down below in the description. That helps out, too. Also, all the links in the bottom are Amazon affiliate links. So whenever you make a purchase, a couple of cents go to me. No cost to you, but it does help us out. So I'd really appreciate that. Check out the links down at the bottom. Shop around. Do what you want to do. But once again, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for your support. We just hit over a thousand subscribers. I'm very happy. We'll be giving a uh, doing a giveaway soon. Also, we're working on a live stream. 
Stay tuned for that. I'm not going to get into that, but stay tuned for it. Once again, thank you for watching. Beagler Outdoors, out. Thank you.